Well, today I'm going to stretch the canvas. And you might wonder why stretch a canvas when there's so many different varieties and sizes available already stretched at your art supply stores. And the main reason is generally you're not going to find an unprimed stretched canvas. And for me, the surface is very important. And if you think about a lot of your color field painters like Morris Lewis or Helen Frankenthaler, they were painting on an unprimed cotton duck canvas. Uh, even one of my favorite paintings, Autumn Rhythm by Jackson Pollock, is painted on an unprimed cotton duck canvas. Although he didn't stretch his canvas, he would generally take a roll like this and roll it out on the floor of his barn. But I'm going to stretch the canvas, and at the same time I'll tell you a few things about canvas, the different uh, textures and the different thicknesses that are available. These are the tools you'll need to stretch a canvas. A uh, staple gun, some staples, these are 3 8 you can use quarter inch also. A tape measure, a pair of pliers, and a pair of scissors, or in my case I use a razor blade. The first thing you need to do is cut the canvas to a rough size. And you want to make sure that you leave, I leave about 3 or 4 inches so I can pull it over the back of the stretcher. Now that's the stretcher that I'm going to use behind me over there. Another important thing is make sure your table is clean. If you're not going to prime the canvas, you'll want a nice clean surface, especially if some of the unprimed canvas is going to be part of your finished painting. So the first thing I'll do is roll it out and then cut it to my rough size. So I've cut the canvas to the correct size, and you can see how when I pull it over the stretcher, it comes over about two inches, and that gives me some room to hold it with my hand or the pliers. I have the stretcher centered on the canvas. What I'm going to do now is put a staple in the center, and then go to the other side of the canvas, put one staple in the center there, and then work my way around the canvas. And then what I'll do is do consecutive staples about maybe two or three at a time and work my way outward. I've got one staple on each side and now I'm going to work my way from the center of the canvas to the outside edge. And so I take a pair of pliers. Now they make a special pair of pliers for this but this is just a pair of pliers I've had for years now. I do two on each side of the staple so I'm sort of pulling the canvas and then I'll work on this side of the staple. And again I'm pulling out and to the side towards the corner. Once I get near the corners I start to work on both sides of the stretcher. But I don't want to go all the way to the edge because once I get about here I like to make what's called an invisible corner, and that's where you fold the canvas in like this, sort of 45, and that gives you this, just a seam at the edge instead of, instead of folding the canvas back that way. So this is a nicer, more finished look. And basically, so what I'll do now is work the staples here, and once I get the staples nice and tight here, then I'll work this edge and the canvas will be finished. cotton duck. And the way they uh, describe the measurements of canvas is the lower the number, the thicker the canvas. So most of your store-bought stretch canvases are number 12. This is a number 10. It's a little bit heavier and I like that surface. Now uh, there's a couple things I could do to this. Uh, I could paint directly on the raw canvas. I could just go and gesso it. Um, and another thing, uh, the, the artist Doug Olson would often use an acrylic matte medium 
on his canvases. And I, I thought that was kind of interesting. So that might be something I'd try. Anyway, uh, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you next time.